the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah, one of the premier games on the WCC slate each and every year. It's 18th ranked Gonzaga in position once again to win an outright WCC championship, 16 and one in conference. BYU and every other team staring up at the Bulldogs, the Cougars nine and seven. However, BYU can climb to that number three spot you got to take care of business against the top team in the WCC today, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us alongside the former fabulous basketball standout, Kristen Kozlowski. I am Spencer Linton. It's one thing to know what you can do if you pull out the victory. It's another thing to actually do that. So, Kristen, the question for BYU is today, how do they get the better of a team that has looked in a lot of ways, utterly dominant in the West Coast Conference. Well, they're going to have to play a near perfect game here today. They got to get it done on both sides of the court. They got to utilize Gustin inside, and they're going to have to defend on the perimeter. This is a fantastic three point shooting team in Gonzaga, number one in the nation in, in three point field goal percent. They're disciplined, they're balanced. They do almost everything right. They don't beat themselves. So BYU has to be able to match that as well. Now, BYU had the unbelievable task of opening this conference late at Portland and at Gonzaga. Not easy. That was all the way back in December feels like forever ago but just to recap let's take a look at our sports history showcase presented by the BYU store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere December 17th yeah more than two months ago BYU coming off a tough loss or rather a, a tough stretch open up conference play play the Zags pretty 16 and a half points per game leads the WCC in assists per game she just does a little bit of everything to take the reins for this Gonzaga team Great players find a way to get better when they have teammates go down, and she certainly has done that. You use the word incredible and amazing to explain Lynn Trong. On the BYU side, Lauren Gustin is absolutely that for the Cougars, the nation's top rebounder. She's breaking records seemingly every game that she plays this late in the season. What makes her so special? Oh, the 6'1 junior, as you mentioned, she is breaking records. One recently she broke was the WCC single season rebounding record last week against San Francisco. She now has 440 rebounds this season. She is a dog and a beast on the board. She doesn't take a shot off. She goes every single time to the boards. She's really increased her ability to score on the offensive end and be that anchor on both sides of the court for this BYU team. And she's doing it all. She has three 2020 games just this season alone. And we know what Gustin is going to do for this team. Leads the team in scoring and rebounding. She's number one in the nation in total rebounds, rebounds per game, and second in double doubles with 24 on the season. Yeah, 24 double doubles in 27 games. It should be like, it should be 27 out of 27. That's the type of player that she is. Certainly to reach those type of marks, you need big goals, both short term and long term. And these are a fluid conversation between Amber Whiting and Lauren Gustin. For more on that, let's join Kennedy Miller. She's definitely goal oriented. Earlier this week, when you and Jerem met with Lauren Gustin on Sports Nation, Jerem asked her, How, what have you been doing to get these rebound breaks? And she said that she sat down earlier this season with BYU head coach Amber Whiting, and they made a list of pretty high goals for her. I would say uh, the start of this year, um, Coach Amber had us all kind of write our own personal goals. Um, and one of them for sure was uh, average double-double and to be in the top um, in top rebounder. So I didn't necessarily have like one or two in the top, you know, as far as like listing, but I knew I wanted to kind of be up there. Um, so I think that, you know, it's, it's going you know good so far, but I just gotta keep it up and just wanna get wins at the end of the day, so. <laughs> is very team oriented besides her own success and she actually talked about later in that interview how her and her teammates have been looking forward to these last two games versus Portland and Gonzaga since the beginning of conference play in December when BYU was a completely different team so it'll be interesting to see how these two teams shape up here tonight Spencer thank you Kennedy huge game for Gustin and the Cougars in their pursuit of a better seed in the West Coast Conference tournament in Las Vegas Again, on the line for Gonzaga, an outright league title. They don't want to share this with anybody else. Our opening tip-off presented by Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. Let's get it underway. The Zags control, or control rather, the tip. Here's Kaylin Trong. And the Zags in red with that navy blue trim. BYU in the black uniforms with royal blue numbers and trim. There's Yvonne Ejim. 
tries the long jumper, misses it right side. That's tracked down by Ariel Mackey Williams. Our starting lineups presented by Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. We mentioned Trong and Ejim already. Maxwell Williams and Hollingsworth are the other three to round out Lisa Fortier's starting five. BYU basketball now. Falatea, Mackey Williams, Smiler, Calvert, and Gustin. And Calvert is called for the traveling violation. An early turnover by BYU on their first possession. Back to the Zags. Well, both these teams primarily play man-to-man -man defense, but they will mix it up. We saw last game when these two teams met about two months ago, Gonzaga went some zone in there and threw BYU off. But primarily, they're going to stay in that man-to-man -man defense the entire game. Hollingsworth holding at the left elbow, bounces inside to Ejim. Good pass out to Williams. Three is no good. Offensive rebound is grabbed by Hollingsworth. And the Zags will reset with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Gonzaga averages 12 lots of offensive boards coming in. That's where BYU can get in big trouble. If they can't box out, Gonzaga is so good at punishing you off of your mistakes and not rebounding the ball. Long three misses back iron, but last touch by Lauren Gustin. So Hollingsworth misfires from distance, but the Zags granted another opportunity after Gustin was unable to secure that offensive rebound. Our keys to the game presented by Tim Daly Nissan. Tim Daly out of group serving Utah since 1968. As you watch another shot go awry for the Zags, Kristen, what do the Bulldogs need to do to get out of Provo with a win? Well, they got to box out. They got to secure that rebound. They're 22 and one on the season when they out rebound their opponents. And then ball pressure. Coach 48 told me that they want to be up pressuring the ball so Gustin can't get easy catches inside. And for the Cougars. Defensive board, secure that board. Gonzaga already has two offensive boards early in this game. That cannot happen. It's a must that they just keep them to one and done. And then ball control, take care of the ball. It's been an issue for BYU all season. You want to have a higher assist to turnover ratio in this one. We've seen one turnover from the Cougars already on that early travel. Gustin missed a jumper moments ago. Now Gonzaga searching for the first points of the game, and they get him from the right side. Yvonne Ejim soaring into the right side of the basket, off glass and good. That's been an improved factor in her game. And last year, she was typically more of that defensive presence inside the rebounder. She was the reigning sixth player of the year in the WCC, but she has really improved her ability to take you off the dribble. Falatea's pull-up jumper from the right baseline is a little bit long. Strong, and Williams want to run the floor. Falatea does a good job to get back and prevent the fast break layup. Bruno Maxwell. As Williams tries a long three straight away, and that's down. The Zags, good from three. And you can only hope for so long that they are off the mark before the shots start dropping. Just such a great shooting team altogether. That's a 37% shooter in Williams, and she's not even one near the top for this team, as Britta Maxwell is the one that leads the nation overall. And watch, just the ball movement is where they get you. And get lost if you turn your head, you're not in your line of the ball. Too much space for shooters on this team, and BYU cannot afford to do that. You have to be so disciplined defensively and find your line of the ball. Just saw the head coach of the Zags, Lisa Fortier. They're up 5 nothing early in Provo. This has not been a friendly place for the Zags in West Coast Conference play. They don't have a losing record against many teams, even on the road. They've got one against BYU, just 4-7 and seven in 11 games played in the Marriott Center. We'll have more on that in just a little bit. For now, the Zags trying to build on a 5-0 lead about three and a half minutes in. Crossover dribble, Trong, wide open three, missed it to the right side. The Cougars fortunate there to stay within five. That's the one player you don't want to have a wide open three. Yeah, lucky break, right? Air dodge the ball. This is what they got to do is get best in the ball, but... Gonzaga is so good at pinching in that helps side defense. They're rotating on the time of the ball as it's being passed. And so Gustin is just completely limited down now. Now Gustin had 20 and 13 last game. So that's at the forefront of the scouting report when you're looking at BYU. Amber Whiting in her first season with BYU, 14 and 13, fourth place team in the WCC. They want that three seed. And they're likely gonna have to beat Gonzaga today and then beat Portland on Monday. Mackie Williams cut off. Send it back out to Falate. Thought for a moment about a three. Passes on. Her pass is tipped and intercepted. Three early turnovers for BYU in the first quarter. The biggest reason they're not scoring right now is you got to take care of the ball. You have to value every possession against a team like Gonzaga because they are so good at capitalizing off the miscues. And there's a turnover given back to BYU. Mod Hybens couldn't control the entry pass. And BYU catches the break, still searching for their first points of the game. More than four minutes in, they trail five to nothing. 
You see a little extended pressure, this 1-2-2, two, two, trying to force BYU to speed up when they do get into their half court. And the Zags just about forced another turnover. Matthew Williams is left open for three. No good off the back iron. Rose Bubakar up to grab the rebound. And a foul is called on Eliza Hollingsworth in her attempted box out. Rose Bubakar was huge when they played up in Spokane. She had 15 points. She was all over the boards. She defended. Take a look right here. She anticipates this ball. Very athletic. Able to elevate, go up and get it in the contact right there. She draws the foul. Falatea to inbound baseline right. With bounce to Gustin in the right corner. Cycled to Bubakar. Kaylee Smiler looking for an angle to drive in. Flips that out to Bubakar, and in the process, she is fouled as she slapped across the wrist. Second team foul on Gonzaga. Here comes Kaylee Trong in for her sister, Kaylin Trong. Kaylee Trong wears number 11, and this is just her second game back after missing three months of not being able to play with that foot injury. She injured it back in November against Tennessee, five games in, so still limited minutes for Kaylee Trong, but boy, She's the leading scorer from a season ago, and they have really missed what she's been able to do. What a boost, and BYU gets their scoring boost from Lauren Gustin. With a right-handed floater near the hoop. That drops in, it's five to two. Our score box sponsor today, Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Here is Lee Trump. The screen will go back to Hollingsworth, more than capable three-point shooter. That one rims off, rebound, tracked down by Gustin. Your coach Fortier, you love that look though, because Kaylee Trong did her job. She took the defense with her. She drug it all the way into the paint and gave her teammate a wide open look. Gustin, that's Falatea. Falatea terminates the dribble in some trouble, being pressured by Maxwell. Mackie Williams trying to step through, forces up a tough left-handed shot that is short. And the Zags hold defensively once again. But Lee Trong turns it over. Not on the same page, looking for Mod Hybens. Falatea, wide open, Ariel Mackey Williams, and we're tied at five with just over four to play in the first quarter. You have to love how Falatea is playing right now. I know she hasn't scored a point, but she's brought her team back to tie this game by the piece. And she's just so smooth. So she makes a play on the defensive end, reads the defense. He's a wide open shooter, gets the ball there in time. Trong guarded by Falatea. Hollingsworth setting the screen. Trong is over it. Got to the hoop. Couldn't score the right handed layup. Just a little bit soft on the shot attempt. And Bubakar shuffled her feet when she took the pass across mid court. So a fourth turnover by BYU in the first quarter. Will Grant Gonzaga the basketball when we come back? Here late in the first quarter, 3.42 to play. Gonzaga and BYU tied at five. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12. Dance Mountain Resort, courtesy of our one of our audio technicians, Scott Sandstrom, an avid skier, and doing a fantastic job showing you just uh, a little bit of the snow that has dumped in the Intermountain West <laughs> over the past few weeks. Hey, those snow days my kids really love when they wake up and get to play in the snow, rather go sit in school. Nice and warm and dry inside the Marriott Center. We're not complaining about it to watch a premier basketball game in the West Coast Conference. Lee Trong for three, no good. Battle for the rebound. And they're gonna get Brenna Maxwell. On the back of Kaylee Smiler. It'll be her first personal third team foul for Gonzaga. Now with 321 to play in the first quarter. Falatea skips to Bubakar on the right wing. Another skip pass to Smiler. Three pointers on the way, just long. And it's grabbed by Esther Little. Well, Smiler, a decent three-point shooter, so that's a good look. That's for BYU, very important just to be ready to shoot, take your moments when you have those shots. Lee Trong and Lynn Trong both in the game. Here's Lynn, guarded closely by Falatea, and a floater off the back of the 
The glass and rim, and no good, but rebounded by Ejim. And the reset for Lee Trong is good. You can only give the Zags so many opportunities before they make you pay, and they certainly do so there. And five offensive rebounds already early in this game, and you saw Yvonne Ejim, she just had excellent position, and she's gonna get that rebound nine times out of 10 if you let her get that low without boxing her out. Rose Bubakar's three is well long. Ejim running the floor beautifully and scores. Great transition basketball from Gonzaga. 5-0 run, and it's 10-5 for the Bulldogs. Boy, if I'm on the court with Lynn and Lee Trong out there, I am going to run, just as you saw Ejim do there, because they're going to find you and get that ball up. Very good at hitting you in the passing lanes, on the fast break, and BYU just struggling right now. Steal by Bubakar, fourth turnover by Gonzaga. After Falatea missed her jump shot. BYU just two of nine shooting as a team. The Zags... Four for 14 with those five offensive rebounds. They've already attempted five more shots than BYU, and they have the five-point lead. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay BYU basketball. BYU trying to get Gustin isolated in the post. Off that rebound, you see the kick out, and that's what they're so good at because the defense is scrambling off the board to try to locate the offensive player. Heads up play from Ejim. Now BYU on their half-court set, they can find a way to get Gustin the ball. They have to get creative. Maybe pull her out a little, do a little pick and roll, two-man action. She is a staple to what they do on the offensive side by getting touches. Calvert to beat the shot clock and does. Flashing to the high post and knocking down a 16-foot jump shot. That ends BYU's almost three-minute scoring drought. It's 10-7. Zags with the ball in front by three. Calvert should have plenty of shots right where we saw right there at the free throw line. Maxwell answers back. Correction, that's Michaela Williams answering back from almost the same area that Calvert just hit her jump shot. It's 12-7. Williams already with five points in this game. She's been active, looking for a shot. Comes in averaging just about 7.7 .7 points per game, seven and a half. Salate is bumped on the drive to the hoop, left side. And BYU will have a couple of free throws coming from Nani Falatea. First free throws attempted by either team here in this early part of the game. Substitution for Lisa Fortier. She sends Eliza Hollingsworth back into the game. Brenna Maxwell also back into the game. The sharp shooting transfer from Utah. First free throw for Falatea is up and good. It's a BYU team that relies so heavily on getting paint touches and scoring in the paint and just two points right now in the paint. And if they can't get Gus in the ball because defensively they're packing it in around her, we need to see more of what we saw from Falatea. She needs to put the ball on the floor and attack the rim. Maxwell for three. The offensive rebound by Ejim. You know what? Yvonne Ejim may be trying to send a message here today that she's a pretty good rebounder too. She already got three rebounds, four points. She's doing work on the glass, right? And she's in there creating these second chance opportunities for her team. Calvert with the steal on the inbound. Emma Calvert from one end to the other. Left-handed layup and a foul. Well, mark that down as one of the top highlights of the season for Emma Calvert. Top highlights of her career. Watch that six foot four, her go out, anticipate the pass, and then finish on the other end. I love the confidence that she kept the ball. She had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and went right at the Gonzaga defender. The steal, the hoop, and now trying to pay off the three-point play. This will tie it at 12, she does. 28 and a half seconds to play in the first quarter. Gonzaga can hold for the final shot if they choose to do so. It'll be Lynn Trong across the timeline, picked up by Mackie Williams. Ejim up high. I imagine she'll come out to set a screen at some point, and there it is. Gustin out to hedge aggressively. Maxwell with six and five behind the back dribble into a three. Front rim, no good. Rebound, Gustin. And Falatea will heave it up from three quarters court. Wouldn't have counted even if it had gone in. We're tied at 12 after one quarter of play at the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah. The 18th rank Zags trying to close out an outright WCC title. BYU with other ideas. Stay with us. This is where we dominate. Our playground. Place of business. 
This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves, and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. father started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. They've attempted seven more shots than BYU, and we're tied, but it's because the Zags have turned the ball over five times. And BYU capitalizing on those turnovers with nine points. You look at just how dominant Gonzaga has been this season and some of their outstanding individuals. Britta Maxwell, we mentioned, tops in the NCAA in three-point percentage. Over 50%. There are a lot of players that can't shoot 50% from the free throw line. She has hit a three-point shot in every single game this season. That helps, obviously, the team overall, the number one in three-point shooting. They're a fantastic free throw shooting team. That's important for BYU to keep them off the line. But so far, BYU has given up two makes on the perimeter from the three-point line, and none of them have come from Maxwell, so they've done a really good job defensively on Maxwell. Zags, not surprisingly, score more points in conference than any other team in the WCC. And that's why they're 16-1 and one in league. And 26-3 and three overall, Lauren Gustin shuffled her feet before she began her move to the hoop. And that's turnover number five for BYU. That's exactly what Lisa Fortier wants from her team. They're gonna force Gustin out, make her hit shots outside the paint, or put the ball on the floor, that time forcing a turnover. Ejim working on the baseline against Gustin. Oh, what a pass, Yvonne Ejim. That is gorgeous basketball as she finds Hybens. And just an awareness, right? As she has hands in her face. I mean, Lauren Gustin keeping those hands right on her, good defense, but the awareness to see her teammate cutting under the basket. Falatea off the screen from Gustin. They'll leave Gustin open from 20 feet. That's an air ball. Calvert trying to save it in. Mackie Williams tracks it down. BYU with three on the shot clock. Two, Smiler may not know it. She'll get to the rim. No good, offensive rebound. Lauren Gustin back out to Mackie Williams. BYU resets. Calvert left alone in the post and she scores. Good find from Falatea. And Emma Calvert has seven points to lead BYU tied at 14. The extra possessions, creating those extra opportunities on the glass, so important with Gustin hunting down that ball. And I'm telling you, Calvert may have a big game here today as you see a strong move by Williams to the basket. Michaela Williams gets that one to crawl over the front of the rim. And the Zags back in front by two. Offensively, BYU, there's just so much attention on Gustin inside. Ejim's doing a nice job. Everybody's aware of where Gustin's at when she's posting up. That's gonna open up Calvert a little bit more. Skip pass to Smiler, fakes the three. Out to Calvert for three. And that goes down! Emma Calvert having a career game and we're not to halftime yet. She's got 10 points. Well, she's taking those shots when she's open. If they're going to sag off her and stay in the paint, worried about Gustin, she has to step up and hit shots, and she's done that with confidence. Ten points for Emma Calvert to lead all scorers. Yvonne Ejim to Williams. Such unselfish basketball. The three is missed by Maxwell, but another good offensive set by Gonzaga. No complaints from Lisa Fortier, I'm sure, about that shot selection. The Smiler props to her, boxing out. And that's a lazy pass right there. It got tipped, but Calvert's got to be stronger up top. Maxwell for three. No good again. Back rim. It falls into the hands of Hybins, and she scores the and win. One. 
A free throw coming for Hybins as the Zags go back in front by one. Let's check in with Kennedy Miller. Guys, you talked about Emma Calvert's great performance. During that timeout in between those two quarters, Coach Whiting singled her out and was like, congratulations on that. The girls in general, she talked about being disciplined and getting those offensive rebounds. So that's where the emphasis is placed right now for BYU. Guys. Thank you, Kennedy. Three offensive rebounds for BYU, a couple bounds. And that's something where I'm sure Amber Whiting also touched on is boxing out, securing the defensive board. Don't give them up those second chance opportunities. 19-17, Smiler to Calvert. She'll try another three. Unbelievable. Emma Calvert is outside of her mind. Feed her the ball right now. When you've got a player that's hot and she's confident, She's gonna knock those shots down, and that's where BYU needs to get her more involved now in those pick and rolls, as we saw right there. Smiler, beautiful job on the pass. 13 points for Emma Calvert. 13 of BYU's 20, last touch by Gonzaga on the attempt for a rebound. You see Smiler right here. She's taking both defenders with her, and that's exactly what she has to do. She's gonna drag the defense, and then right back to her shooting Calvert, who was ready, had her feet set, Calvert's five for five from the field, including two three-pointers. She's got an and one and the 13 total points. BYU trying to build on a one-point lead here. Amanda Barcelo recently into the game in the corner, back to Smiler with seven on the shot clock. Smiler to Barcelo with four and three. Amanda Barcelo gets to the hoop. Players making plays right now for BYU because Gonzaga is so occupied with Gustin and limiting what she's doing. Other players stepping up like Calvert and Barcelo lifting BYU offensively. BYU as a team has connected on their last four shots. They lead by three, Lynn Trong. And as Trong came over the screen from Hybins, Mackie Williams a little bit too much contact with Hybins. So Ariel Mackie Williams will pick up the defensive foul. There's another look at Amanda Barcelo with the shot clock winding down. And that's just a smart play right there. She didn't settle for the jump shot. She knew she had a couple extra seconds to put it on the floor, get to the rim, be aggressive. It's exactly what you want out of your team right now is just go out and compete, be aggressive, don't play hesitant and settle. Maxwell got it aggressively on the three-point line. You think BYU has scouted her as a three-point shooter? Absolutely, and they've done an outstanding job. She's 0 for 5 in the game. But Lee Trong. That's a big response with momentum on BYU's side, and that calms the Zags down, quiets the crowd. 22-21, BYU basketball. The Cougars in front by the lone point. Gustin over to set the screen for Mackie Williams. Here's Barcelo, cycled to Falatea. Falatea. Picked up by Ejim on the switch. Has Barcelo, who thought about a three. Probably should have taken it. It ends up in the hands of Emma Calvert, and why not? She's six for six, and showing some versatility. A little floater from the left side goes down. BYU in front again by three. How about a new career high for Emma Calvert in the first half with those 15 points? Previously, it was 13, which she scored against Portland. Falatea, Barcelo, wide open for three. No good. And the BYU crowd ready to explode if that three went down from Barcelo. Just over four to play in the half. Lee Trong to Maxwell on the left wing. Maxwell wants Ejim inside. Now the bounce to the Zags power forward. Another good pass on the interior and a foul is called as Esther Little attempted the shot. And that is a big foul because I believe that's gonna go against Emma Calvert. That'll be her second personal foul. She reached in late. 4.01 to play before halftime. BYU in front by three, Emma Calvert. 15 points to lead the way. Frank Gonzaga, 401 to play before halftime. Emma Calvert has a new career high in scoring. 15 points, hasn't missed a shot, six for six, including two threes. She's gonna have to sit with two fouls now. Oh, did I mention that everything that she's done has happened in the first 16 <laughs> minutes of the game? 
just incredible how she has come out with confidence, knowing she was going to get open looks, all the attention on Gustin inside. They're sagging off of her. And we already know she's a capable three-point shooter. Even though her numbers don't quite reflect that this season, she's one of the best three-point shooting bigs for BYU. And boy, what a half so far. Unfortunately, she just picked up that second personal foul before the break. Bubakar wants three. That is no good. Rebounded by Callie Stokes. Esther Little made one of two free throws, so the Zags now within two and with the basketball. Ejim and Gustin, fun matchup to watch. Backdoor cut by Lee Trong, Maxwell, Little. Reverse layup is, or rather that's Callie Stokes. The reverse layup is no good and the loose ball ends up in the hands of BYU. Push to Mackie Williams who is bumped by Lee Trong. That's the first foul on Lee. And first team foul for Gonzaga here in the second quarter. Of note, you have to have five team fouls to put an opponent in the bonus for the remainder of the quarter. So Gonzaga nowhere close to in trouble. BYU with three team fouls at this point. Kaylee Smiler back to Falatea. Working off the screen from Bubakar. Good pass. Bubakar inside, but quick hands by Little. And a steal for the Zags. It's a big defensive play because Rose was coming in there, full head of steam, going right to the rim, and the ball just slapped away by Little. Seventh turnover by BYU. This to tie it at 24. And a little bit short on the shot. You wonder how the legs are feeling for Lee Trong after such a long time sitting Absolutely. out. Absolutely, and, and that's been the biggest thing I think Lisa Fortier would touched on is that it's her wind right now because she was in a boot for so long. You can't ride the bike, you can't run, as you see a huge three-point make from Nani Falate. When they need a clutch shot, she is the player who's gonna step up and knock it down and just so versatile, can score at all three levels. So she is really tough to defend. Five points for Falate. Lin Trong. Wanted the entry pass to Ejim, forced it, it's stolen. Smiler pushing as Mackie Williams hesitates. Ball goes up, no good. She'll shoot two free throws with 2.16 to play before the halftime break. We're so impressed with the ball movement from BYU. It's not getting sticky. And you see right here, just a read of the defense. Because they're trying to force her away from the screen. And Nani says, thank you very much. I'll take this open three. BYU in this quarter alone shooting 60%. Six for 10 overall from the floor. And three for five from distance. First free throw is good by Mackie Williams. BYU extends their game high lead to six at 28-22. No field goals for Gonzaga and Lisa Fortier's squad over the last three minutes. Mackie Williams makes both. BYU up 7, 29-22. The Cougars shooting 48% from the field as a team on the game. Gonzaga just 32% at 9 for 28. Hybens. Watch how well these guards fight through the screen. That is something that BYU's backcourt is so good at, is getting through those screen action. Offensive rebound by Hybens, and she gets another one off the miss of Michaela Williams, and then got the rebound off her own miss. Another opportunity for the Zags. Lynn Trong to Ejim, and an offensive foul is called. We'll see who they charge it to. I believe they get Hybens on the post step inside. It is inside. That's going to be her first personal. She was trying to take advantage of the inside against Rose Bubakar, who's shorter than Hybens. But Rose just held her ground and took that offensive foul. Some pressure from the Zags. Falatea beats it on the pass to Mackie Williams. And now the Bulldogs will fall back into their defense. Bubakar, jab step. Got up in the air, bailed out by Gustin, double teamed. That leaves Smiler open for three, no good. Offensive rebound, Bubakar, and the left-handed putback. It's a nine-point BYU lead, 31-22. Seven-nothing run for the Cougars. The Zags in a three-minute scoring drought. Michaela Williams has been the answer on more than one occasion. She opts for Lynn Trong here. Well, she has a team high for Gonzaga with seven points. Well, Maxwell and Kaylin Trong have just struggled to get themselves active and going on the offensive side of the ball. Ejim from the right elbow. Big bucket for Yvonne Ejim. You know, that quiets the crowd a little bit, but that's a shot I think that Coach Whiting will live with. You know, forcing Ejim to come out, that's what they want to do, and make her take tough shots outside of the paint. 
Bubakar to Falatea. Falatea working in the right corner, and she stepped on the sideline. Eight turnover of the half for BYU. Gonzaga basketball with 31.3 seconds to play before the teams head to the locker room for a short break. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Gonzaga most likely will work this shot clock almost down to zero to prevent BYU from having another shot opportunity. Again, the game clock about a second longer than the shot clock. There's Michaela Williams, guarded by Gustin. Maxwell. This match inside, we've got Falatea on each end. Maxwell in trouble, three on the shot clock, two and one. And she got it off the glass and a foul. Well, I think the officials are going to talk about this, but because the high official did so, not agree. Watch this. There'll be Maxwell, just the heads up, relentless play to get to the rim, knowing the clock's going down. Now, there are a couple things at play. Does the shot clock expire before the ball is out of her hand, or was the foul committed before the shot clock expired? I, how, how does that all work? There, there's well, so many if, moving parts here. If you watch it release from her hand, I think she got it off in time. I, I do think she released it before you saw the back of the backboard light up. And the official did just signal again, count the basket. It was good, but they will review this. This will be the first points for Maxwell. And she has had a tough go with the first half. Yeah, just one for six shooting. And we, you pointed out earlier, she's hit a three in every game she's every played in this season. Every single game. I mean, come on, Kaylee Smiler. Like, the props need to go to Smiler and what she does defensively. Probably the most underrated player on this BYU team who needs to be talked about more because she is so incredible defensively at shutting down the opposing team's best players. BYU led by as many as nine just about a minute ago. At 31-22, Yvonne Ejim hit a jumper from the right elbow, and then Maxwell to beat the shot clock, and essentially the halftime buzzer. Watch scores, and will she have a free throw as well? Oh, right. that's so close. Is that ball still in her hand when the shot clock expires? We take a look at it. Oh, oh my man, goodness. I don't, I, I, it's. Is there enough to override it, right? The initial call was that it was good. And so let's freeze it right there. Okay. Oh. Uh, you don't get any closer than that. So it looks like, so if we go back one frame, it looks like the ball is in her hands yep. when that shot clock is at zero. And there still should be time remaining. You see like 1.2. It should be 1.2 remaining for BYU if it is a shot clock violation. Yes, that's a great point. Oh, so they're going to count it. Wow. Wow. This, this is a little bit surprising because I thought we saw clear evidence that that ball is still in her hands when Absolutely. that shot clock hits zero. Yeah, from our vantage point, from what we were re-looking at, it looked like it was still in her fingertips. Well, mark this down as an absolutely massive play. Now they're going to come back and look at it again one more time. And this may be just adjusting the clock. And now that they've agreed that the foul did occur, that she got the shot off, they're giving her one shot, but now they're looking at the clock to see how much time is left. Well, Christian, if this game is decided by a couple of points, and let's oh. say it goes in Gonzaga's favor, then you can <laughs> rewind to this to moment. Here it is one more time. And freeze. It's still in her hand with one second. And the shot clock. Okay, so again, we. Well, she makes that the free throw, three point play, 1.4 on the clock. So BYU is going to have a heave here. Falatea from just beyond half court lets it go, and it misses left side. Uh, the Cougars led by nine moments ago. It's now just a four point lead as they go into the halftime locker room and a totally different feel for Gonzaga rattling off five points after their offensive struggles in the second quarter. For BYU, I just thought they played a solid first half. That's a hard way to go into the half, giving up a three-point play at the very end. And such a close call, right, with that angle and trying to see if it made it in time. But heads up by Rena Maxwell. Kennedy, 
Kennedy Miller is with Amber Whiting, the BYU head coach. Coach, obviously, Gonzaga started off really hot with that 5-0 start, but you guys were able to combat that in the second quarter. What allowed you to do that? Uh, my girls just displayed a lot of grit, a lot of toughness, because they know they're going to go on a run, and this isn't a 20-minute game, it's a 40-minute game, so we got to play. And Emma Calver, obviously an insane career-high points in just the first half. What allowed her to be so successful? Um, she's just taking what's given her, and she's shooting the ball really well, so that's a good thing, and I hope she keeps it up. You too. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Kennedy, and our thanks to Coach Whiting. BYU with a four-point lead. 15-minute break in Provo as the Zags try and wrap up a conference championship with upset-minded BYU standing in the way. We'll be back with more West Coast Conference Women's Basketball in your halftime report right after this. factor in the emergence and development of Lauren Gustin. BYU with a four-point lead, 31-27 on 18th rank Gonzaga. We'll be back with stats and highlights in the second half right after this. John, what can we do? Don't be afraid. Jairus! His prison is nothing now that he's here. Unclean! You are not to be in the street or among us! Andrew, listen to him. You know For the most part, what we expected it to be, hotly contested, longtime rivals, but the stars have been a bit of a surprise here, Kristen. Specifically for BYU, it's Emma Calvert with a career high, scoring in a game. She did it in the first half in 16 minutes. She put up 15 points. It's been a fun surprise to watch Emma Calvert go to work, especially if they're going to sag off her and be worried about Lauren Gustin. How about six for six from the floor, two for two from three point. She was active. She was moving. Also a rebound in there. She do two personal fouls. Watch this. This was the best play of the game so far. And she gets the steal, takes it all the way for the and one. And knocking it down from the three. She has to come out, continue with the same confidence and aggression, and look for her open opportunities and take them. BYU shooting 11 for 23 as a team. That's good for 48% in the first half. The Zags 11 for 32, 34%. The Zags have attempted nine more. Those two players coming in average over 32 points per game. And so BYU has really executed the defensive game plan coming out. They're fighting through screens. They're communicating. They're helping each other if they do get stuck a little bit. And I think they're doing a really good job on the boards. Yeah, Trong and Maxwell just one for nine shooting combined. You would think that will change very quickly in the second half. You just can't keep good players down for that long. Lisa Fortier knows that all too well. Moments ago, she spoke to Kennedy Miller. Obviously, um, but the rest of them, I think we're battling. Coach, just violent trailing going into that half. What are some positives you took away from your team from this first half? Well, I think we were battling on defense, so we did not do a good job defending Calvert, obviously. Um, but the rest of them, I think we were battling. I think we were battling Gustin around the glass. That's just a hard job to do for the entirety of the game, and that's something we have to continue with. BYU definitely found themselves coming out of that half. How do you combat that going into the second half? Um, I would say with defensive energy and intensity, we got to get ourselves out and transition a little bit. I don't think we've executed very well in the half court, and they're tough because they, they, they get through screens screen so quickly. But our, our players have to be ready to score when the ball comes to them. I think we're a little hesitant right now, and that's not helping our cause. Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks. Coach Fortier, always gracious. Uh, just an icon in West Coast Conference basketball. Has done an incredible job with that program and has done so with Craig Fortier, her husband on the bench with her, which I think is uh, one of the more enjoyable and cooler dynamics of any bench in the West Coast Conference. All of her assistants, you've got Craig Fortier, Stacey Kleinsmith, Jordan Green, all of her assistants have stayed with her for all 10 years, and that says a lot 
about Lisa Fortier and who she is, the loyalty to her. And her players don't transfer often. In her 10th season, she's won seven WCC regular season championships, including this year, where they've already clinched at least a share. And they're looking to get this game where they can win it outright if they're able to beat BYU on their home court. Gonzaga ended the half on a 5 0 run. I have some details about what looked like a little bit of a controversial call there that we can explain in just a moment. BYU basketball. Emma Calvert back in the game. Had to sit the last four minutes of the second quarter with those two fouls after she scored 15 points. Falatea skips to Mackie Williams. Mackie Williams drives inside and parts through those red jerseys to score the left-handed lead. Yeah, I thought she had an open look on the outside where she hesitated, but she does have that ability to put the ball on the floor, create, get to the rim, as we saw right there, a higher percentage shot as she got to the left side. Michaela Williams, solid first half for Gonzaga. There's seven points. She's cut off by Falatea at the right elbow. Back to Lynn Trong. Six seconds on the shot clock. Trong. Contact, ball is lodged in between the rim and the backboard. And Kaylin Trong will have two free throws. Where's Rose Bubakar? Rose Bubakar can go up and get that ball. Now watch right here as that controversial call going into the half. Did she get it off in time? So what I was told is that when the foul is committed, the game clock and the shot clock are both supposed to stop simultaneously. So if the foul is committed with one second on the shot clock, it's supposed to stop right there. So the one should have been stopped with the 1.4 on the clock as well. And then the act of shooting is allowed to continue through. So not a controversy if the foul and the whistle blows before that shot clock expires, which the officials said it did. She paid off the three-point play, huge turn of events. And now here we are with BYU leading 33-28, five-point lead, led by as many as nine late in the first half. Mackie Williams creates a wide-open three attempt for Falatea, missed it long. Ejim collects on the baseline, and she has Lynn Trong. Outstanding open look, though, if you're BYU and you're getting that drive penetration, you're getting the defense to suck in, and an open look from Falatea. Maxwell. Scored that and one just before half. Egypt inside. Nice high-low play right there from Gonzaga, and they're within three. BYU getting stuck in a one-on-one right there with Egypt, and it's that lob pass. They're so good sealing their defender, allowing that lob pass to come in. Follow Taylor to skip pass to Mackie Williams, who tries a three. That's long. Mackie Williams chases it down, but Trong spins out of trouble, looking to lead the break. Lisa Fortier signaling to a point right now. We want to run. Get up. Let's get that ball going and put some pressure on BYU. Try to get something easier in transition. Maxwell. Ball is loose. Smiler harassing her defensively. And you spoke about it a few minutes ago, Kristen. Kaylee Smiler is such a pest defensively and is typically put on her opponent's or the team that she faces, their best shooter, their best player. Right now, Mackie Williams has the assignment on Maxwell, and Smiler is on Lynn Trong. Maxwell has an opening for three, cannot find the mark. She's one for seven, 0 for four from distance. Even though Smiler got tangled up just a little bit on that screen, Maxwell's uncomfortable knowing she's coming quickly over the screen, so she almost looked before she shot that three-point shot, which throws you off as a shooter. Emma Calvert is fouled inside as Gustin was looking for the entry pass there. First team foul on the Zags, and the third foul on Eliza Hollingsworth. Calvert being guarded a little more aggressively through her incredible first half, but she's got an open three again. That's her first miss of the game. A wide open look, though, as BYU runs that continuous pick and ball on the wing, and their guard line is doing an excellent job of just dragging the defense enough to open up Calvert. Trong wants Ejim, bounces inside. Gustin guarding on the baseline. Ejim going right at Lauren Gustin. Physical on physical, and she gets the bounce. 
How about the patience from Egypt to go right at Gaston, took her time, knew that nobody was coming to help out. It was a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and she takes that ball, uses good footwork scoring. And she's brought her team to within one. BYU up by one, 33 to 32, as we go to a break for this timeout. Game Day Promos helps BYU build the Cougar brand with customized postseason basketball tournament. Just a matter for BYU of what seed the Cougars will take into Vegas. Gonzaga will be the number one seed, but will the Cougars be the, in that three or four spot? A lot rides on the result of this game in determining that, and also whatever happens between Portland and BYU in a rare Monday game because the pilots could not get the Pro Bowl with travel issues. Gustin, frustrated by Ejim, has her shot blocked. Yvonne Ejim into the front court, and the Zags have an opportunity to take the lead. Trailed by nine late in the first half, they're within one. And this is what they do to you all season long. They get it done with their defense, which fuels their offense. The intensity has been there in the second half on the defensive side of the ball. Foul inside. It's going to go against Lauren Gustin as she's battling for position with Egypt. Egypt with 10 points and five rebounds. Gustin with two points and nine rebounds. Now, Christian, if I told you that with six minutes to play in the third quarter, Lauren Gustin had two points and BYU had a lead, <laughs> I, you didn't look at me like I was oh, crazy. That's right. I mean, you've had a lot of help from other players for this BYU team that have stepped up, particularly Emma Calvert with those 15 points in the first half. Calvert. And a good pass from Falatea. Thought she had a layup, but it slapped out of her hands. It'll stay BYU basketball. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Well, this Gonzaga team has battled injuries and sickness throughout the season. Yeah, a handful of games where they only had seven players available to play, but they're finally getting healthy and getting their players back with that depth. Michaela Williams with the steal and score. Gonzaga back in front. Going back to the late part of the second quarter, the Zags are on a 12 to three run. Calvert's pass inside, Gustin not even looking in the general direction of that pass. And a turnover for the Cougars. As the Zags in transition missed three, Hyben's offensive rebound. And Zaga having their way on the offensive glass as well against BYU. Lee Trong spinning, can't score it. Falatea with the rebound, running with numbers. It's four on two. Smiler in 4 three. Long, no good. Mackie Williams with an offensive rebound. Put back is good off the glass, and BYU's in front by one. Boy, BYU really needed that shot. That was massive. They had not scored in four minutes and 15 seconds. And Mackie Williams gets it done with the board and then finishing through the trees. Two red jerseys straight up with a lot of height that she had to finish through. Lin Trong, quiet today. Into the post, so all sorts of size there for BYU, so back out to the perimeter. And Smiler's asking for a moving screen. Her arm got up around the neck of Lynn Trong. Foul is called. Amber Whiting's also asking for a moving screen as well. A timeout on the floor. 35-34. BYU in front by one, don't go anywhere. On the season premiere. A lot of emphasis placed by Coach Whiting on just playing basketball. And uh, the timeout before the other coach was playing a lot of emphasis on uh, really putting better defense on Smiler and Calvert. And so we'll see what ends up happening here tonight in this close game, guys. One point game, 439 to play. Thank you, Kennedy. And there was a, Thank continued, you, a continued argument from Amber Whiting in regard to that foul called on Kaylee Smiler. BYU again wanted the moving screen. But the Cougars, they dodge a bullet. The Zags misfire on their shot, an air ball shot over the rim. And now BYU basketball still with the one point lead. Falatea. Guarded by Williams, Mackie Williams flashing straightaway three is long, rebounded by Lynn Trong. Well, she's open, she had the look. And Mackie Williams, very capable three-point shooter, 
Nine points in the game, and when you've got open looks, you've got to take them and knock them down because you don't get them often with the type of defense that Gonzaga plays. Hybins. Well, you got to get a three seconds. You know, I think that's what the crowd wants is they're yelling. Esther Little. Spent a lot of time there. A nice move by Lee Trong. We see Falate with that hesitation so often for BYU and Trong showing it off for Gonzaga just moments ago. One point, Gonzaga lead now. Entry pass, oh, a dangerous one. Dustin trying to battle for that ball. There are three red jerseys around there. We've seen that twice now here in the third quarter. One from Emma Calvert, that time from Rose Bubakar. The awareness has to be there. It's like a safety that you've got to see, right? Ready to come in and pick that pass off. Gonzaga's done a nice job pinching in on that high-low look. Lintrong cycled to Williams for three. No good. Battle for the rebound. Mackie Williams comes up with it. And Mackie Williams is fouled by Esther Little. Well, let's rewind to that high screen that brought about an argument from Amber Whiting. And I don't know, like, is, is there much movement there? I think it's just physical player. Or is Hollingsworth moving? I don't, I don't, I didn't see much there. Not a lot of movement. I just think that Amber Whiting going to bat for Kaylee Smiler was probably more important than what the foul call was, right? I mean, I watched Whiting go talk to the official for a good extra couple seconds and minutes going into that timeout to plead her case and hopefully get calls in the future. And Smiler is doing so much defensively to chase those shooters off those screens or the on-ball screen and stay tight to their hip. So I love that Whiting went to bat for her player. Calvert saves it into Barcelo. Falate with four and three. Bounce pass, Gustin. And she's fouled just before the shot clock expires. A rare opportunity for Lauren Gustin to score in this game. And this is created all by Nani Falate, the creator off the bounce for BYU. She's so good, especially as she got by Maxwell, making the right play to Gustin. Gustin misses the first free throw. She's had her struggles from the free throw line this season. Now Calvert has been able to get going because they have been so worried about Gustin. And Gustin has only taken four shot attempts. She's coming off a game against San Francisco. They only let her take six shot attempts. And they did similar game plan defensively where they pinched it in. They were helping every time. Now Gonzaga is running in the post, not giving her anything easy. Big miss free throws from Gustin right there. Gonzaga stays in front by one. Ejim has Maxwell. Barcelo draped on her. Maxwell inside the three-point line and knocks down a long two. That's where Maxwell can have a little more success is coming off that screen, looking for the pull-up jumper in the mid-range because BYU is really trying to keep her off of the perimeter and run her off the three. Falatea. Terminates the dribble at the elbow, now to Smiler. Nothing doing for Gustin inside. Calvert back to Falatea with six on the shot clock. Falatea for three off the screen. That one rims off. And the rebound grabbed by Lynn Trong, looking to run. Picked up by Smiler. Ejim cycles to Lee Trong. Maxwell. Nothing for Hollingsworth inside. Three is missed badly right side, but another offensive rebound for the Zags, and they'll reset again. Hollingsworth back out to Lynn Tron. That offensive rebound mark is a growing concern for the BYU bench. And an offensive foul is. is called on the screen, and that, to your point, Amber Whiting argues extensively there in hopes of getting that call and that wipes away what would have been a huge three-point make there's nothing she could do to go back and correct that call right as we were going into that last timeout. but this is where it pays off for whiting is because she gets the call right here and there is movement they're going to watch it closer now because amber whiting went to bat for kaylee smiler and they get that call a big break now byu's done an outstanding job on limiting the three-point shots. And as you saw right there, they're getting through screens, doing a good job. This is the number one three-point shooting team in the nation coming in at 42.6. And they've held Gonzaga to 15%, just two for 13. Mackie Williams wanted the rebound, or right, wanted the reverse layup, rather, and the rebound grabbed by the Zags. Williams running the floor, keeps it in play. Lin Chong 
Another hesitation move. Shot is blocked by Calvert. Barcelo. Shot clock and game clock almost identical as we close out the third quarter. Big defensive stop, and this is where BYU needs to get something. Going into the fourth quarter, continue that momentum. And the Calvert, number two in the WCC in blocks per game. Three-point Gonzaga lead for the moment. Falatea. Three and two. Barcelo probably should have taken the shot. Had an open look. And there's 1.3 on the clock. So a shot clock violation called on BYU. I think you're exactly right, though, Spencer, is that's a shot where Barcelo needs to be aware of the clock, be aware of the rotating defense. Lin Tron off the glass, that last heave, and we'll go to the fourth quarter. Gonzaga has worked their way back into a three-point lead. Moving your family doesn't have to be stressful. Not when you use Bailey's Moving and... Obviously, a huge fourth quarter ahead between Gonzaga and BYU on the women's side. Then the San Francisco Dons will match up with BYU on the men's side. Join us for our pregame show beginning at 9 Eastern. Our impact players, Kristen, how about this? Oh, Kaylin Trong, one goodness. point. Lauren Gustin, two points. I don't think anyone anticipated that. With just 10 minutes to play, Gustin spinning as Calvert. Smiler cycles to Mackie Williams. Opening possession of the fourth quarter. BYU scored just four points in the entire third quarter. Yeah, not, not a good third quarter frame. They did not score the last five minutes of the third quarter and just two for 10 in that frame. Zero for six from three points. Uh, uh, they're lucky at this point to be down just three, that it's a 38-35 game right now. And we've really had a defensive battle. BYU's taken away the three-point shot, which is a strength for Gonzaga. And Gonzaga's taken away Gustin, but that's a big bucket to start the fourth quarter for her. Just her fourth point of the game. Persistence by Calvin to stay with the cutting Gustin. They find the passing lane. Gustin scores a left-handed layup. Is that enough to get Lauren Gustin going? Just four points. Hybens is fouled by Calvert. That's her third personal. Both teams with an early foul here in the fourth quarter. Exactly what you want your flashing post to do is you're going to look at the high-low. You obviously look at your shot first. Look at the high-low. It's not there. A clean sweep and get to the rim as she drew the contact. Ejim, physical move. And what a matchup in the post between Gustin and Yvonne Ejim. And it's been advantage Ejim today with 12 points and 7 rebounds. She's been able to be more active and get better looks at the rim because BYU is not doubling her. Jumper from Falatea is good. Nani Falatea with seven points. That's what I like to see from Falatea. This is where she is the star on this team along with Gusson, and she's got to step up and hit shots, carry some of that offensive load. Hybins looking for Lin Trong, now has her. Strong working on the screen of Hybens. At the free throw line, back to Maxwell. Behind the back dribble. Ejim flashing high post. Ejim from the free throw line. That one rolls off. Rebounded by Calvert. Falatea looking to push. Falatea to Smiler. Now Calvert. Gustin isolated in the post. Spins around Ejim and scores. A rare one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Gustin in the post. The yeah. double team has been there basically the whole game. And the ball didn't stick that time with Calvert because the pressure wasn't there. That's been a key component defensively is that ball pressure. It was not there, so a clean look inside for Gustin. Gustin now with six points and ten rebounds. Moving screen once again. This one on Mott Hybins. The same official making the call that Amber Whiting got into it with as we went into that third quarter timeout break. And she was arguing that moving screen call. And so that's going to be at the forefront of the mind of these officials watching for that. The question is, was she moving when Mackie Williams tried to get around her? Because from that angle, it's hard to tell if she had her feet set. And that's what Lisa Fortier is arguing is, look, she's set. 
And she can move once the contact comes because the contact is forcing her to move, right? And so you're watching for that hip and you're watching as long as she's stationary when that defender gets to her. Blocking foul is called on Callie Stokes. And that'll give BYU a free throw opportunity. Let's check in with Kennedy once again. With how tight the game is, Amber Whiting is really making sure this team stays grounded and focused, saying stay calm and be ready to shoot and do it with confidence. We're coming down to the crunch time, Spence. Indeed, 7.34 to play. Emma Calvert makes Thanks. her free throw. BYU with a two-point lead now. Well, Calvert has been really quiet here in the second half. Gonzaga's done a much... Big free throw makes for Emma Calvert. She extends her career best to 17 points now. Like you said, Kristen just for two points here in the second half, but a big two. Maxwell for three, and she gets a foul call. And maybe Lisa Fortier arguing for her team gets that call. Coach has got a coach. And Maxwell still has not connected with a three-pointer today. There's her foot on the line. Ooh, it might be just two free throws. They're going to take a look at this. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, and you see the leg kind of extend. Well, typically they, they call a flop on players when you extend the leg, which is what Amber Whiting is going to talk about with the officials. 7-16 to play in the fourth quarter. You think both of these squads want this game? <laughs> Stay with us for more on BYU TV. Coming down to the wire. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we uh, Another close call here. Brenna Maxwell fouled on a what we think is a three-pointer, and it appears that that right toe may just be behind the line by a centimeter. I, I don't see any part of her shoe clearly on that line. It was called a three-pointer. No indisputable evidence to overturn that, so Maxwell is going to have three huge free throws here. She's an unbelievable shooter. And if she makes all three, we'll be tied at 43 with 7.16 to go. Yeah, she's almost a given at the free throw line at 94.4%. Only missed four free throws on the season. But keep in mind, as we talked about earlier in the broadcast, she has hit a three-point shot in every single game this season and has yet to hit one in this game. And that, I think, is something that Kaylee Smiler took personal in defending her and trying to take that away because she has really made Maxwell work. Perfect on the first two free throws. One more for Maxwell to tie it at 43. Maxwell, a transfer from the University of Utah. How pure is that stroke? And boy, she can shoot. 43 all. Big foul call, big free throw makes for Gonzaga. A game of momentum shifts for sure. Smiler looking for some help, finds it in Justin finally. Justin has the ball poked away by Mott Hyvins. Eight seconds on the shot clock. That extended pressure is really wreaking havoc right now for BYU because they're picking up their dribble and they're standing straight up rather than at least keeping your balance and being able to make a good pass. Falatea being pressured, jump ball. And the possession arrow in favor of Gonzaga. Empty possession for BYU. Gonzaga with an opportunity to take the lead. Some hesitancy on that offensive side, uh, especially in that possession where they're picking up their dribble, they're not looking to attack. When the pressure comes, you have to be able to play downhill and attack the rim. Lin Trong. Just the one point today, averaging 16 a game. And a foul is called away from the basketball. Smiler and Maxwell tangled up. Third team foul on BYU. Gonzaga also with three team fouls. Reminder, if you have five team fouls, you put your opponent in the bonus, shooting two for the remainder of the quarter. Now this is a Gonzaga team you do not want to put on the line because they are an excellent free throw shooting team at 78.9%. 
Maxwell's three misses again. You missed it earlier. Since BYU and Gonzaga got into the same conference, the Zags just four and seven in Provo all time. Well, quick whistle on the jump ball right there. It does stay with BYU. The double team came as they were trying to take away that lob pass and Gaston trying to rip it to go up, but the whistle did come early. Smiler, big three on the way, and that one rims off. Both teams having trouble finding the mark from beyond the arc. Hollingsworth. Maxwell. Forcing the issue at the rim. BYU has numbers with Maxwell trailing. Calvert, skip past Smiler in the right corner. He was trying to isolate Gustin. And work with Falatea from the left side off the screen of Calvert. Her shot is partially blocked. Calvert, friendly fire. She collided with Gustin. And Michaela Williams has it for Gonzaga. It's that ball was blocked. Calvert trying to fly in there and colliding with Gustin, as you mentioned, and into the hands of Gonzaga on the rebound. Williams, she'll take a huge three, no good. Rebounded by Calvert, and Hybens whistled for the foul on the back of Calvert. 14 foul on the Zags, with 5.09 to play in the game. And watch this tiptoe right on the line. Is Williams, even some contact. Ooh, it looked like she stepped, with that left foot stepped on the line. A lucky break for Lisa Fortier's squad. Every possession is so crucial when you're struggling to score. I mean, we're in a defensive juggernaut right now in both these teams over two minutes where they have not been able to score. Low scoring game. Gonzaga averages 73 plus points per game in West Coast Conference play. They're at 43. Smiler. Left-handed layup is good. There's so much attention being paid to Lauren Gustin. It created a window for Smiler, and she took it. She changed her pace just a little, using that hesitation. Gave her a slight advantage over Egypt when she attacked the rim. 45-43. Egypt answers back inside. Beautiful pass from Lee Trump. A weak side, all the black jerseys for BYU. No one aware of where the ball's at. And to have that help side defense, it's an easy just going right up for Egypt as the ball came right into her hands. Calvert. A swing to Smiler. Falatea collects straight away, 30 feet away. Working out the screen from Gustin. Little floater, too strong, and the rebound by Egypt. That is her eighth rebound of the game to go along with 14 points. Crossover dribble, a lead strong, poked away by Smiler. A reminder, our score box presented by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. 3.54 to play, tied at 45. Kristen, this is the type of game that BYU's been in so often this season. And against big-name opponents, notably Gonzaga, back on December 17th. Tight game, rebounded by Calvert there on the miss from Trong. Well, the officials letting it play out, and I love that they are. Let them be a little physical. Let the game decide who's going to come away with this win. Ejim. And her foot is on the line. It'll stay BYU basketball with 3.35 to play. Now watch Smiler coming off that screen. Reds reads it perfectly. You see, Ejim didn't quite commit to help, and it gave Smiler an angle to finish on the left side. Tough finish right there. 20 seconds on the shot clock for BYU. Mackie Williams to inbound. Has Falatea. Back to Mackie Williams. She'll try a three, and that's an air ball. Well, the shooting rolls for both teams continue. A lot of contact. What a finish by Lynn Trong. Oh my goodness. I wondered when she was going to have a breakout player moment. Super frustrating afternoon for Lynn Trong. And she comes up with the shot of the afternoon right there. Matthew Williams, air ball on the other end, and then trying to get back. Contact, acrobatic finish from Trong, and she's got her team pumped up. Those are momentum plays, and that's exactly what you need if you're Lisa Fortier 
from your squad is to get it done defensively and score in transition because points are so hard to come by right now in the half court. Big free throw miss there. It stays a two-point lead for Gonzaga. Now 3.26 to play. And Kristen, continuing on the close game factor, BYU's been in this game against Oklahoma in the previous game against Gonzaga. And they've had several West Coast Conference games come down to the wire. Trong, or BYU fortunate that she last touched that, it'll stay with BYU. Almost another miscue by BYU. You got three minutes and about 15 seconds to go. You have to value that ball and know that the Trongsters are going to try and poke in there, that Gonzaga is going to continue to take away what you do offensively. So be strong with the basketball. Cougars have just had struggles closing out these tight, close games against the elite level opponents. Can they figure it out today on their home floor? Falatea, step back three, another air ball. And it just feels forced right now from BYU. They're settling for outside shots because Gonzaga's doing a good job packing it in, not allowing the dribble drive, not allowing any penetration, and they're taking away the inside presence. BYU now four for 20 from the three-point line. They're 0 for 10 from three in the second half. Gonzaga, not much better, two for 15. This is the best shooting three-point team in the conference and one of the best in the entire country in Gonzaga. They're two for 15. BYU, however, just at 20%. This is a Gonzaga team that comes in at 42.6% on the perimeter. That leads the nation and the conference. So incredible job defensively in what BYU has been able to do to take that away. On the flip side, Gonzaga is doing an outstanding job on Warren Gustin inside or anything inside. Yvonne Ejim playing one of the best games that she's played all season. 14 points, nine rebounds, two assists. And she's in position to grab the double-double, not Lauren Gustin. She's helped Gustin to just six shot attempts and only six points in the game. BYU's leading score, and there she is again, right on cue. Ride the hot hand, and Lisa Fortier knows where it is with Ejim. Now 16 points, nine rebounds, and a free throw still to come. The reigning sixth woman of the year in the WCCs from a season ago. She was an all WCC second team selection last year. That was a big play coming out of the break. Five point Gonzaga lead. This is where they have been so good. In just critical moments. Gustin, Calvert. Good move inside, misses the layup, offensive rebound by Gustin and the putback. It's now a three-point game. BYU obviously in desperate need of a stop right now. Look what happens though because Calvert didn't settle for the outside shot. She actually attacked the basket, defense has to rotate or they're out of position and it creates more opportunities. A steal, Falatea has Mackie Williams. Bounces and scores. Points off turnovers. For BYU in the crunch, it's one a one-point game at 50 to 49. Gonzaga basketball timeout. Lisa Fortier and the BYU crowd is back in it. How about the defense from Falatea? She gets the steal, gets up the floor really quickly, splits the defense on a two-on-one opportunity, and places that ball perfectly for Mackie Williams right here. The double team. She is so smooth and so good at finding her teammates in transition. Uh, Mackie Williams with the finish. None bigger than that right now at this point in the game when they needed to close the gap. A little four point spurt for BYU. It'll be Gonzaga basketball coming out of the timeout with 21 seconds on the shot clock. 2.02 to play in the game. BYU has committed five team fouls this quarter, so every foul that goes against BYU will result in two free throws for the Zags. One more foul for Gonzaga will put BYU in the two-shot bonus as well. Here's Lynn Trong signaling the play. BYU comes out in a zone. I like the mix-up, but you have to find shooters on the perimeter and box out on the shot. Skip pass and another steal by Falatea. Again, numbers for BYU to Mackie Williams again. Overshot the layup. It's last touch by Gonzaga. 
Almost an identical situation with Malate coming up with the ball and a two on one, but this time overshooting the layup. A little too heavy off the glass. Falatea will try three, and the Cougars' struggles continue from behind the three-point line. Four of 21, 0 for 11 from three in the second half. One-point game, Gonzaga dodges a massive bullet right there. And a foul is called on Mackie Williams. Double bonus, Zags going to the free-throw line. Got to put Kaylin Trong on the line. Was it committed against Trong or was it committed against Hollingsworth who set the screen? And, the, and Trong is lining up. Yeah, it was two. Smiler. So Smiler was the, or excuse me, Mackie Williams was the one that fouled Kaylin Trong. So Kaylin on the line with just three points in this game. She comes in leading this team at 16.4 points per game. And BYU has been fantastic on her, especially when she comes off the pick and roll. It's staying tight. And watch right here. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah right got in, it in the chin. Yep. Good call Second by the free official. throw is up and good as well. Two big free throw makes for Kaylin Trunk. She's got five points. And Gonzaga pushes the lead back out to three. What a turn of events right there. BYU has another steal. They have a fast break layup. If they make it, they go in front by one. It's missed. Cougars miss a three after that. And now Gonzaga's fouled and makes two free throws. Really could have gone either way as it just barely bounced too hard off of the backboard with Mackie Williams in that fast break situation. Look, a three point game. There's still a good amount of time left. A minute 17 remaining. But BYU cannot afford to settle right now. They don't need a three point shot. They do not need a three unless you are wide open and you have a really good look. I think you attack the basket because they've had success with their guards, particularly Falatea or Ariel Mackie Williams at getting to the rim. BYU with 13 turnovers, Gonzaga with 11. So after the shaky first quarter for both teams, turnovers haven't played a huge factor until a couple of steals late for BYU allowed the Cougars to climb within one in the fourth quarter. Uh, this has just been an absolute battle. And really, who's gonna make the big shot down the stretch? Lynn Trong's and one was huge, and Ejim with the big bucket as well. Those, those have been the answer. Yeah, balanced attack from Gonzaga. Any player can really take this and get to the rim, but of course, they're gonna put it in the hands of Kaylin Trong, who has been their steady master. And Bubakar fouls Lynn Trong. So Lynn Trong will shoot two, Gonzaga leading by four. 23 seconds to play in the game. I'm surprised that BYU waited as long as they did. I'm, I'm not sure that Rose meant to foul in that situation. I mean, she should have fouled earlier, but I don't know that was meant to foul, particularly Right when the official called it. Now this is an 80, about an 85% free throw shooter in Kaylin Trong, and she is stepping up with confidence, knocking these down. Got plenty of options. You got it's a 94% free throw shooter in Maxwell. 80 plus from Trong, 81 from Ejim, and she calmly knocks down both. Six point Gonzaga lead. Oh wow! Well, if Gonzaga can escape here. And I'm sure the conversation with Lisa Forty after the game will go something like, how did you manage to win in Provo <laughs> and only make two three-pointers? Oh, my goodness, right? And you shoot 36%. In talking to her, so what you going to miss about these games? She said, you know what? I really won't miss playing games in Provo. It is not easy to play in this place. And if you go backwards to last season, that was one of the worst conference losses that this Gonzaga team has ever faced, where BYU just thumped them and won 63 to 39 here at the Marriott Center yeah. a season ago. So a little bit of revenge on their mind, knowing that this is a strong BYU team. They're gonna leave a statement as their last trip to Provo with BYU moving to the Big 12. Gustin takes the inbound. Mackie Williams, BYU's gotta move quickly. Smiler fouled with 18.2 to play. 
So two free throws coming for Kaylee Smiler. Now the chess can begin a little bit. Kristen, do you make one and try and miss the second, knowing that Gustin and Calvert are down there to potentially grab an offensive rebound? You try and make both and then work on a steal? What are we talking about? I think you make both because points have been so hard to come by right now. And so clock stopped. You make both. You foul right away. It's got to be quick. And if you're going to foul someone out there, you really probably want to foul Eliza Hollingsworth, who out of all five players out there is the least effective at the charity strike. Smiley. Answers with two free throws of her own. A four-point game. Gonzaga basketball with the lead. And a timeout as Amber Whiting establishes what she wants to do defensively with the full court pressure. If you're just joining us, very physical and entertaining game for sure. Leading the way for Gonzaga, Yvonne Ejim, 18 points, 10 rebounds, two assists, just a massive double-double performance on the road in Provo when her team needed it in the worst way. You know, she really came alive in the second half. She had six points in the first half, but what she's done on Lauren Gustin has been just as valuable, and I know that Coach Fortier and her staff feels the same way. Her goal coming in was to slow down Gustin, and they needed a player to step up to do that, and that has been Yvonne Ejim. And she's been outstanding in the paint at being physical, making it tough for Gustin. Gustin has only attempted seven shots from the floor. Gustin with the eight points and 13 rebounds. She has 453 total rebounds this season. Just an absurd number. And she's still got a full regular season game to play. And then the West Coast Conference tournament game, which is a guaranteed at least one more matchup. And then what, what about a potential postseason? She holds three of those top seven spots in BYU history. Just remarkable. And, it, and as we talked about, Hollingsworth is the one you want to foul. She averages 74.5%. So that could, that went as best as planned right out of the timeout, fouling the right player. Although 74.5 isn't too shabby. That's not bad when that's your worst free throw shooter on the floor. Hollingsworth has not scored, however. No points. Got into early foul trouble. Couple of rebounds and massive free throws forthcoming. For Eliza Hollingsworth. Because you're looking on paper, you're going to put her on, but also the fact that she hasn't scored, as you pointed out, this is the one you want to put out there. Now, either way, BYU's got to be in a rush and try to just get all the way to the basket. And if you can't, if they collapse and they rotate, then you got to get a kick out for a three. Hollingsworth knocks in bowl. How about Clutch stepping up, big time free throws to help extend this lead, the 6'3 junior. 17.7 to play, six point Gonzaga lead, BYU basketball. Kennedy Miller, what'd you hear from the BYU huddle? Yeah, as you said, Spencer, there's only 17 seconds left in this game, and Coach Whiting really just placed an emphasis on getting those steals. She's like, you can guys get fouls and shots later, but the first thing to do in order to pull out this win is to get the steal. So that's what they're gonna have to do, guys. Well, if it were another team, you might like BYU's chances. They're just too many veteran players on the Gonzaga side to think that they're going to have this type of meltdown. They just don't do this, Kristen. They don't. They don't break down defensively. They, they especially in clutch situations right now at the very end of the game. And here's what's hard to believe, Spencer, about this Gonzaga team is every single player that you are seeing out there is coming they're back. They're all coming back. Next year. This is a team that has no seniors. They're all coming back. Well, they do have some seniors, but they, they have that COVID extra year of eligibility, so they're able to come back with the experience that Lisa Fortier is going to bring back. Now for BYU, they graduate just two players as well, and Debra Millet and Gabby Bosquez, who were yeah. honored before the game here on senior night, senior day. So two teams returning a lot of their depth. Calvert to inbound, Falatea. Thought she was going to take the three right there, does not. Smiler, precious seconds winding down. Calvert with 10. Bubakar, she'll force up an air ball three, rebounded by Gustin, and she's fouled. So Lauren Gustin 
for what it's worth, is going to have an opportunity at collecting another double-double, assuming that she can knock in both of these free throws. She's got eight points and 13 rebounds. So anticlimactic for sure. But and that should, mark is on the line for Gustin. They should give her that rebound as well. So it should be her 14th rebound. Well, Gonzaga going to win this basketball game. Gustin misses the front end of her two shots. She has not come out of the game, and I know it has been extremely physical with Ejim down low. And Gustin 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Hollingsworth with the rebound. Calvert will foul Ejim, who will have an opportunity to get to 20 points to go with her 10 rebounds if she can make both of these. BYU just two of their last 12 from the field. And their opportunities were there. Gonzaga didn't make a field goal in the last almost three minutes, but knocked down clutch free throws. And the, the three-point shot for BYU, four of 22, it just, it's going to be hard not to dwell on that and feel some frustration on your home floor about not being better. And these are, a lot of these are open looks, Kristen. Yeah, wide open shots, uh, particularly in the second half where they just have really struggled 0 for 12. You know, you, you hit big shots in the first and not necessarily just three-point shots. All four of their three-point makes came in the first, but you can't do it in the second. Falatea, just beyond half court. And Gonzaga leaves victoriously. 58-51. They lock in an outright West Coast Conference Championship. 17-1 on the season. A top 20 team, and they will ride a huge wave of confidence into the West Coast Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. They've got a lengthy break, Kristen. They don't have to play for nine days. Much needed, I'm sure, just to make sure everyone's healthy coming in. The depth is now there with some players back. They look sharp. I mean, they, no doubt BYU had some moments where they were able to stop them and some scoring droughts for Gonzaga. But when the game's on the line, at the very end of the game, players make plays, and Gonzaga was able to do that, especially with Yvonne Ejim, who is huge for this team in what she did on both sides of the ball. Well, that image pretty much says it all. BYU and their players will recognize the fans that showed up to support them. But ultimately, they have to settle for a seven-point home loss. Gonzaga finishes 20-55, BYU 19-51. Three-point woes on both sides. Zags win the rebounding battle by seven. And again, the outright West Coast Conference champions with a nine-day break before they'll take the floor again at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Our play of the game brought to you by ESS Dental Health Education Foundation, reminding you dental cleanings are essential for your health. And here is Gonzaga with Brenna Maxwell with the... Play clock and shot clock, or rather the shot clock winding down, the halftime clock winding down. This kind of felt like a, a huge turning point late in the first half. BYU was up seven, but that shot doesn't go in. And she didn't make that free throw. BYU's got a seven point lead going into the halftime locker room. Instead, it's just four, and there's that momentum boost given to the Zags. Could have given it to Lynn Trong for her and one as well. Absolutely. Incredible layup. Yeah, multiple plays that were down the stretch Gonzaga made, but I do think I agree with you that that was a momentum booster going into the half and kind of signaled how they were going to come out the next half, which is what we saw. They were playing on attack. They were more aggressive. The guards were looking to turn the corner off of the pick and roll action.